I feel shattered, as if there were a thousand pieces of broken glass inside me, each corner pricking me. And my soul is crying with pain. But I dare not say that aloud, because there are voices inside me. Voices that tell me that I have to be strong, and being strong means hiding my pain. My inside is filled with darkness, and yet what most people see is a bright and smiling person on most days. That night of October 14th changed everything for me. It altered the meaning of life that I had known back then. It was a regular day, or actually slightly better than a regular day. My parents were traveling out of the country, along with my older sister and my aunt, my brother, uh, father's sister. So I had invited all my friends over for lunch at home, and my brother's wife cooked us a fabulous meal. We had a great time looking at her jewelry and her fancy clothes and the wedding pictures. My brother had only been married for six months. By the time my friends left, I sat down to finish my homework for the day. It was around 8 p.m. or sooner that I got done. Nida was still studying. She's my younger sister. She's also my best friend. And given her presence, I never felt the need to make any other friends. I scolded her for still not having finished her homework. While she was only 11 months younger than me, I easily took on the role of supervising her. I felt like the older sister. Since there was still time for dinner, I thought I'd go and see my friend who lived just across the street two minutes away. As I was leaving, my brother, whom we call Bhai, was watching grandma's favorite TV show with her in the lounge, and his wife was cooking dinner. My female cousin, who was staying with us, walked up with me to my friend's place, and then she said she'll go back and help uh, my brother's wife uh, in the dinner. Little did we know what was about to happen. As me and my friend sat in her parents' room talking, we heard a loud metal bang. We laughed it off thinking that their car must have hit against the gate once again. There was something that usually happened. In a few seconds, we heard her mom who came yelling upstairs and telling us to get under the bed. We could not understand why she would be asking us to do so. She came upstairs and switched off the lights. The metal sounds continued for a while as we remained ducked under the bed, holding each other's hand and assuring each other in that darkness, not knowing what was happening. As the sounds quietened, I rushed out to go to my place before anybody could hold on to me. When I stepped outside, what I saw was strange. Our home doors were open, my brother's car was standing in the driveway, and its windows were all shattered. I felt really scared, and I went back to my friend's place. Her family encircled me. Another neighbor walked in and said something to my friend's dad. By this time, we had gathered that the sounds that we heard were actually gunshots. I felt really panicked and anxious and wanting to go home. I kept telling them that Nida would be scared and she would need me. And I need to be at home with her. but they would not let me leave. It was a while after another neighbor came in and took me outside. As I stepped outside again, I saw that there were lots of ambulances and police cars and loads of people. Amongst these people was also my third sister, who also lives in the same city with her family. As she saw me, she rushed towards me to embrace me. She, she reacted as if she had seen a ghost. I was confused. I shrugged her off and ran inside my home. 
with everybody behind me yelling and telling me to stop and not go inside. When I stepped inside, I saw pools of blood everywhere where I had left my brother and my grandma. I ran to the room where I had left Nida, and I saw that she wasn't there. Her book was lying open, and while she wasn't there, her long strands of hair were caught between the pages of her book. I went to the kitchen. It was empty. Utensils lying on the floor. The whole house was like a battlefield. There was a hole in the TV screen, and there was blood everywhere. And I still did not know what had happened. As the larger family started arriving, they wanted me to contact my parents and inform them. And I told them to contact my male cousin, because his mom was also with my parents. And I just got empty stares. I did not know that he had been shot outside his home. I later learned that when my bhai learned the news of my cousin getting shot, he was about to leave from home when a car with four people pulled outside our home. And they dragged him back inside and then just opened fire on everyone inside. The only survivor being my brother's wife, who was also badly wounded. My female cousin, who was with us, was found stuck against the TV screen as several bullets ripped through her stomach. And worst of all, my baby sister was dragged with her hair as they pulled her out of the room and then shot her dead. We had to inform our parents. So I remember calling them up and pretending to be Nida. And I told them that grandma had passed away, not telling them how. Nida was the youngest of us all, so they were very concerned as to how she might be taking the news. And they said to me, thinking that I'm Nida, that Bhai will take care of us. I did not know how to tell them that Nida was no longer alive, and the Bhai that they expected to be in charge on that day was no longer alive either. The rest of the night is kind of a blur. I just know in that moment, when I spoke to my parents, while I was only 14 years old, it kind of defined how I dealt with pain for the rest of my life. Because I knew my parents' loss was huge, and we had to be strong for them. The next morning, they told us that we should go ahead with grandma's burial, and they would return as scheduled in 10 days. It is then that we had to inform them of what had happened. And the return arrangements were made, and they came back home the next day. I still remember the day of the funeral. There were five of them. In one room was my brother, Nida, and my grandma, and in a connected room were my two cousins. I would sit by Bhai, I would sit by Nida, I would then move on to grandma, hug my parents, just go about in the circle again, wanting to store their images in my eyes for the rest of my life, because I would not see them again. They were wrapped in white sheets, ready to be taken away. And then we had to bid them farewell, and their faces were also covered and they were taken to the nearby mosque for funeral prayers, and from there on to the cemetery for burial. Our hearts and home could not have been more empty in that moment. But we kind of remained strong for each other. I'm not sure if I even cried at that time. It just seemed like a given. And in the next few days, my mother suffered a stroke. She lost her speech. She lost her capacity to control emotions, half her body got paralyzed, and all our attention turned towards her. And in all of this, 
I'm not sure if I was ever able to come to term with my pain. I'm not sure if any one of us were able to come to term with our pain. Whether it be my father who lost his kids, his mother, practically his wife, and he had to be both a father and mother to us in that time, and yet he was a solid rock. He would always tell us that the world does not cry with you for a long time. You have to learn to bear your own pain. My sister never came to term with her loss. In addition to losing her siblings and grandmother, she also lost her fiance in the incident. And yet she had, at 20 years of age, she had to take charge of our home as my mother was not in the capacity to do so. I would watch her from a distance as she would sit down with my mom, learning, making her learn letters of the alphabet again. And I could not even go close to them. It was just too painful a sight. But we all still stood by each other in that time. And I have not seen my family get bitter in any of this. I've only seen them give back more to the country that took away life from them. But now as I stand here, I feel that I cannot hold this pain inside me anymore. I share this story today because being strong for me has always meant hiding my pain. But I can no longer do that. I share this story today because I've always feared that I'll be boxed as a victim. I want to stop worrying as to what people will think about me. In all my life, I have apologized to my friends for sharing the burden of my pain with them. Ideally, I do not want to apologize today. I know I will never get past this loss. It will live with me forever. I will heal and I will learn to rebuild my life around this suffering. I may be whole again, but I may not be the same. And I share this story today because I want to be all right with just being the person that I am, crazy, emotional, and wanting to hold on strongly to every relationship that I have. I share this story today because for the longest time, I've also held my father against the standard of being strong and not letting him grieve or be weak. I fight with him whenever he tries to be weak in front of me. I want to let him off the hook today. I share this story today because I know a lot of us here may have suffered pain in some form, but we find it difficult to let it go. And in the end, I share this story today because my best friend tells me that being vulnerable in this moment is when I'm at my strongest self. Thank you. <laughs>